Good morning. It's April 21st, 2020. I'm Pastor Rusty, and this is your Daily Inspo. You know, during this time of, of isolation and separation, I know I say those words a lot, it's a good time to reflect on our understanding of Scripture, and it's a good time to spend more time in the Word. I mean, we've been given an opportunity that is a great blessing. Because a lot of the things that are required of us through the day right now aren't required of us. And this world system puts high demands on our time. So much so that even grabbing a time for devotion is hard. So it's a good time to get into our studies and, and, and figure out and know what we believe. I say often, I don't care what you believe as long as you know why you believe it. Because if you know why you believe it, then we can discuss it. But if you only believe it because Grandpa, who was a wonderful Bible scholar, told you that this was the case, and so you just accept it, well, you're not being very Berean, are you? So let's consider what Jesus goes on and says. He says, if a man stares at a woman with lust in his heart, we're in Matthew um, 5, verses 27 through 30. If he stares with stares at her with lust in his heart, he's committed adultery already. And, and, and he, he puts that right behind the place where it says, you know, you shall not commit adultery. And so the argument that day was, well, I didn't commit adultery. I didn't do anything wrong. I'm, you know, there may be snow on the roof, but there's still fire in the basement kind of thing. And that's all Jesus is teaching. Jesus says, listen, to look at with lust. Now, that word lust is is not just an, an admirable glance, but to desire, to, to possess uh, some other man's wife. Now, I say some other man's wife because the the teachings of the New Testament, the way things were, women were generally property. So it wasn't that often that you saw a man was kind of the ruler of all things. Well, we're not that way today, but let's get to Jesus' teaching. So looking at Jesus' teaching culturally, he says if you, if you look with lust, desiring to possess, you've committed adultery already. Then he goes on and says if, you're, if your right eye which was the preferred eye. Um, sorry, all, all you lefties out there that are left that are left side dominant. Uh, in that day, they they acknowledged that the right eye was the dominant eye, and you wouldn't do anything to lose it. So, he says, if your right eye offends you, plug it out. And then he goes on and says, and if your right hand offends you, cut it off. That way, you can enter into life. He said it'd be better to better to enter into life maimed. Well, he's not talking about heaven there. Nobody's going to cut their right arm off. And when they get to heaven, they don't have a right arm. So he's speaking in what we call hyperbole, an overstatement of the truth to make a point. So what's it getting at here? We could get into the discussions of adultery and marriage and divorce. And tomorrow's passage, we'll deal with divorce and we'll cross it when we get there. But here's what he's teaching. You need to be proactive. If you've got issues in your life, you need to be about removing those issues. Something causing you to stumble, causing temptation in your life that you're acting upon. You need to be proactive. In other words, like we said yesterday, own it. If you've got issues in your life, instead of saying, well, it's just how I was made. Or it's just, you know, a natural family tendency. If you look back at the records, we were all that way. That's, that's no excuse. The Bible says that we're new creatures, that the old things have passed away. So we need to be in the process in our life of owning it. Where we have areas of temptation, we need to be proactive in getting away from those areas of temptation. What the Bible calls sin, we need to equally call sin and walk away from. We need to fight those things instead of just okaying it. So Jesus is saying, listen, this is serious. It's not something, in that day they were arguing about who could do what and what was it, was it really wrong and same things we're doing today. Well, let's go back to our master's teaching. He says, if you've got issues, own it and do whatever you can to eliminate. And, and speaking hyperbolically, he said, it, up to and including the point of cutting off your eye that causes you to stumble because the eye is the channel to the heart or the hand which reacts to the eye's vision and causes you to act upon something. Jesus says, hey, work on that. Get it out of your life. You know, I think this is this is something we can do today. We can take a look at our life and see where our areas of temptation lie. And then let's get busy about prayer. Let's get busy about Bible study. And let's get busy about turning those things over to Christ so that he can help us walk through 
so their life isn't miserable. I would say I'm talking to a lot of people who have made decisions based on their sensual desires, and that means anything that affects the body, that caused them to live in a hellish life, a life that derailed them from a glorious life, and probably a lot of regret, and probably a lot of struggles that continue on to this day because we acted upon something that we knew not to act upon. Ignorance of the law is no excuse. And Jesus is still here clarifying the law that was being misinterpreted and misrepresented in his day. you got to remember the culture and the people that Jesus was talking to. So, what can we do today? We can acknowledge where we're tempted. We can acknowledge where we fail. And we can present those things back to Christ so that our instruments can be instruments of righteousness, not instruments of unrighteousness. And if we would do that, if we would investigate ourselves, if we would come to God with our struggles and our failures and, and, and seek his strength and guidance rather than the philosophy of the world today, we would come out of this different. We would come out of this empowered by God to fight against the weakness of our flesh. And isn't that kind of what it's all about? Rather than picking on the, the moat in your brother's eye, take a look at yourself. What can you do? Remember, this is the day the Lord hath made. Rejoice and be glad in it. I'm Pastor Rusty. I'll see you tomorrow.